gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Pink Desk Ramblings. I'm joined tonight by one of the greatest artists of the Night Age project. He has contributed countless uh, pieces of, of art for the books uh, through for a long time, uh, and he's also been uh, putting some magic into into some miniatures with a paintbrush, actually miniatures that he himself has designed uh, and also made available to the project to bring it, it all to life with a range of miniatures known as Caballero miniatures. It's of course Marcus. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing great, man. I'm happy to be here. Pretty excited. Yeah, excellent. I'm super, super excited to have you here. here. Uh, because the topic for tonight is The Kingdom of Equitain, um, which is a book that's being worked on currently by the, pro the project. And uh, we're going to do, do some predictions. Just sit here and guess what's going to happen with the new book and see what, uh, try and figure out what could be in it. Uh, neither of us, uh, of us have any inside information on this. We're just sprouting ideas. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> People says no more than I do, but I don't. Yeah. Um, so before we get into that, uh, tell us a little bit uh, about yourself and, and like the, the work you do for the Ninth Age. Yeah, sure. I, I draw a lot. Um, it's kind of slowed down a lot, but uh, um, I've been volunteering a lot of my time drawing, and I, I love it. I enjoy it. Um, I've made, I couldn't tell you how many I've made, though they weren't all used, because to be honest, um, Thorson's really good at maintaining a, a pretty good standard. So even what I would submit, I'd get it back with a ton of red markings and... <laughs> Because that's, that's how I've improved. And I even yeah. look back at older stuff and I'm just <laughs> a little ashamed of it, to be honest. But uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it, it's. I have to, to as a comment on that. It's it's really been interesting to see how you progress because uh, you really have been getting ba better, I think. Not that you were bad bad to be, begin with, but uh, I mean, the latest pieces in the, in the Infernal Dwarf book, uh, those were great. Yeah. I, oh, I appreciate that. Um, um, it, you know, it's it's just a constant practice and doing it over and over and over, and it's the feedback that helps a lot. You know, and there's still a lot I have to improve, and I recognize it's just a matter of patience and putting yeah. in the work. Yeah, so, of course. Yeah, that's it. But uh, so I draw uh, to make that a little shorter, and then um, I've been, as you mentioned, I, I've been designing a lot of miniatures, and um, that's. That's an interesting story, I think, because I love customization, right? But I'm not good at green stuff. Uh, I don't think I have patience for that. Um, although I, I think the results are, are pretty great, and it's something that you can't typically achieve with 3D sculpting. So yeah. I wish I had that. Um, and I don't have the patience because I don't really have the skill. So it takes so long to get something that I'm, like, satisfied with. I'm just like, screw it. I'm done. So anyway, so I tried... Um, and then I don't really know at what point I kind of became aware of, of 3D sculpting, right? Or, or how available that was to just anybody willing to take the time to, to learn it. <clears throat> but I started roughly, roughly a year ago, I think. I think that's pretty, maybe a little over a year ago. And, um, yeah, just even that, I didn't, I didn't start off very well with that, um, not being aware of how bad I was, to be honest. But um, I think the first model that I sculpted that became, like, I don't know, um, acceptable, I guess you can say, was I actually posted it on, it was an elf. I don't know if you've seen it or remember it. It was, it was just for a friend of mine. And it was me trying out uh, sculpting for the first time. I think I... Was it the, the Judicator, something like that? No, that that came a little after. It was uh, what was the old the Dread Prince? And he's got like two. He's just standing there, super um, boring pose, but uh, the proportions are off. <clears throat> and that came uh, from learning the limitations of not limitations, but just you know, you you look at something on the screen and then you print it, and you're like, that doesn't that doesn't really matter. <laughs> Try to yeah. dust, and then you dust. I'm like, ah, that looks even worse. So anyway, um, yeah. So it was just it was just me trying out 
sculpting for the first time. I think I had the free trial version of ZBrush. No, I take that back. I actually got that first and then gave up because of how complicated it was. I'm like, yeah, wrong. <clears throat> And then, um, and then, you know, I tried green stuff and then I got to the point where I'm like, okay, this is not working. So I'm just in a, and then I started seeing what people were doing with ZBrush. So I was like, all right, I'm determined to learn how to use it. Right. And then I, then I found out that it's just a matter of learning the program and then just putting in the time and patience, same with drawing and art. Right. Like, yeah. I think, I think, um, you know, poor results that I can definitely speak for myself comes from a lack of patience you know like you just don't want to be done with it and even if you're you kind of know it's not up to the standard that you were envisioning at least and i think for the most part for i would say for everybody to be honest um everybody has their vision of what they want something to look like when they're trying to do green stuff or their sculpt or whatever the case may be um and i think not reaching that exact vision is just a matter of not putting in the time. And it just may take longer for some people than others because they don't have, you know, the experience and on yeah. how to use yeah, the skill. I, I would assume that, that like having the artist experience that you have, uh, like proportions and stuff like that comes a bit more natural perhaps. So, it, you know, I mean, it's all tang tangential. Probably, but I think that's still a result of developing that experience through art right like you mentioned yeah it's it's my artist background that helped for sure but it's not like a natural talent i don't think no uh right I mean, because all, all, all of this is i mean the amount of hours you have to put into something before getting good at it it's it's <laughs> yeah that, that's what I it think, is yeah you have prodigies all over the world but they're you can't rely on figuring out you're one of them right yeah probably not but uh um but yeah so all of that um, just had me practicing more and more uh, ZBrush. And so I followed this tutorial on how to make an elf head. I'm, <laughs> I take that back on just how to make a head in general. <laughs> um, it came out pretty cool. And the big difference was trying to practice on my own and then um, following that tutorial. So on my own, I was getting nowhere. And the tutorial made it very easy to accomplish something, right? It wasn't what I would find acceptable today as far as like what I ended up, the result was, but it was, it was more than I was expecting with how much I was struggling. And so that motivated me to keep doing it. And so that head, I just made the ears a little longer and I turned it into an elf just to, just to mess around with it. I was, was kind of practicing. Yeah. And, uh, and I decided, you know, I'm going to make this, uh, an elf for a friend of mine who he didn't request it or anything, but he has a, a dread elf army. And, um, yeah, so I just kept going with it and I forgot what made me go with the Roman theme. It, I mean, it's kind of Roman, right? Like it's, it's not a Roman model with long ears, uh, like that particular elf was, yeah. um, probably the names or whatever, not being familiar with the Warhammer, background i guess it didn't really um, draw me towards it naturally so i just kind of picked the roman theme and went that way <laughs> which but... was fairly lucky in the end um but i guess it's it, it, the clues were already there there a bit for for the dread elves um even back then yeah what the the style was not at least i couldn't find anything that looked you know roman yeah, but it, it, some of the naming con conventions and stuff like in in the units kind of got it. maybe some consciously draw you to 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 it or stuff like that so probably that makes sense yeah so that's probably what happened but um yeah so anyway i just i just rolled with it i'm like it's, it's pretty cool like now that i'm getting the hang of it i'm i'm starting to imagine all the stuff i can do right and you're usually your mind kind of um or ego i don't know <laughs> yeah kinda, <laughs> like, faster than what you can actually produce so i had all these plans for like yeah i'm gonna do this and that and and I'm still not there yet um, because, you know, thankfully, I think my standards have moved a lot faster than my skills. So I'm at the point where, uh, yeah, I guess I'm at the point where I'm pretty happy with a lot of what I can do. But there's still a lot where I'm like, I don't really want this to represent me. So it's kind of funny. You mentioned uh, Caballero Miniatures. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've, I've produced a lot of stuff under that name. And I've gone, I have a lot of it uploaded 
to a store on a website, right? I think everybody knows my mini factory. And so, but I've gone through that and I've actually deleted a bunch of them because I'm like, I don't like those, man. They don't look good to me. And I don't want them to represent me, right? Yeah, and, that's fair. And yeah, and it, as I'm getting better and better and I'm learning that the biggest difference is just how much patience I put into it. Because it's, you know, I kind of gone through looking at some other sculpts. I've gone through, like, I, I've seen an increase of skill and then I've seen a decrease. Or I should say quality or like design quality, right? And I know it's just a matter of me getting like sick and tired of working on that particular model and i'm just <laughs> yeah i i can relate to that with with miniature painting and, and, and stuff like that sometimes you just want to finish it and then the quality goes down that's... yeah but then what, you produce something that you're just like not proud of and that's not good either. yeah that's i think right uh, well it depends right like is it for you if you're satisfied with it even though it's not up to par or up to what your expectations were then so be it you're happy yep. but if it's something you want representing you then that's not acceptable. Yeah. So yeah, it, it's all about what the purpose is. Right. So I, I yeah. was a bit curious about the uh, the, the Caballero miniatures. Uh, you're on uh, Patreon, right? I, yeah. I, I see that's a, a quite pretty common uh, way to uh, to um, put 3D miniatures out there in the world, uh, and I'm I'm sort of torn about that way. Um, I mean, mm. personally, uh, when I would uh, I see awesome sculpts, like I I can imagine myself like buying those sculpts to to print and and, and paint up. That that sounds like, great. But I mean, um, here you, you you pay a monthly sub subscription, right? And then, then you get access to whatever stuff you produce. Yeah. Um, but I guess uh, n now at least, uh, w when it, it started out, I was a bit worried that uh, like the older stuff that was produced, you couldn't access that if you didn't like if you weren't signed up for it when you, when it first happened. But now you have that um, that other site you mentioned, um, uh, my manufacturer. Right, and not only that, you have there's there's five people selling my my stuff, my designs, <laughs> which yeah, means uh, I can't. Like they they're selling the, the prints, right? Yeah, so they'll yeah. actually. Print. Yeah, um, so that that's the like the the two idiots print, printing service and and those guys. Yeah, I always laugh at. Them. <laughs> but yeah, uh, and the funny thing is, I don't know the other four. You know, um, it's, it's fine. I mean, they they're they're buying a license to sell. They could sell it. I can't promote them. That's on them. But <laughs> yeah. All I have to do is ask. So shame on me there. So I'm not saying that's not possible, but I just I'm just surprised I haven't yeah. uh, found out who's selling my stuff. But anyway, um, yeah, that's what it is. But you just so some of the, the designs that I've sold, or I'm sorry, that I've deleted from my mini factory, uh, they're still selling them, which is great, man. If they can, if that can make them money, um, and uh, you know, make it worthwhile what they're doing. Yeah. Then that's great. But yeah, man, I'm not happy with a lot of the stuff <laughs> that I've. So actually, I think that might be a pretty interesting story too. Uh, if you want to hear how I ended up with Caballero Miniatures, that was not planned, by the way. Yeah, sure. Uh, I I made a giant for the giant supplement. All right. With. Oh yeah, I think I've seen that. Uh, like the the prod, uh, the the night giant. Yeah, and so the um, that was kind of a hit, and it wasn't. I wasn't intending to. I guess I was intending to sell it, but I had no real plans. Like I didn't think it through. Um, I was just said I just posted it, and people would ask, like, "Can I buy it?" or "How how do I get this?" And I was my response was, "Ah, I'll I'll sell it eventually, right?" And I. I figured, okay, I'm going to have a day where I sit down and just think all this through and have a plan and a shot. How am I going to sell this? How, what, you know, what am I going to sell it for? Or like how much, right? Um, but I never did. I just, my time, <laughs> my mind went to, all right, I'm going to go draw and sculpt now. And that's it. And then I forget about the yeah. other plans. I but um, anyway, so eventually I did an Etsy thing. And I think I had like two models on there. 
the giant being one and um i forgot what else <sighs> that might have been it to start with to be honest and so i sold the, uh, a few of them and i was like sweet that's cool well one of the guys from the forum is very cool dude uh bob nick hope i can hope it's okay i mentioned him on here but he mentioned he uh sent me an email oh no i take that back yeah he was very proud of it he posted and all that uh a friend of mine actually sent me a picture of another company that was selling it and i was like what the hell are you doing all right so i was a little upset <laughs> yeah Sorry. hey dude do you know anything about this and he told me he's like oh shoot i think that's the company that i used to print it right and like, he did everything normal like fine right that's that's that was good and um but he told me who it was and i was like oh beautiful thanks so then i reached out to them and they were under the impression that they could just sell it um with somebody else uh per yeah taking the or giving them the file to print it and they were actually very very cool and understanding immediately took down the you know the advertising the sell it or whatever that's called um but that kind of showed me, that kind of prompted me to start something. I was like, okay, I really need to get my stuff out there, like my name, so people know what's mine and what's not mine in case somebody else tries to sell it, um, you know, without my permission. So I scrambled and started. Uh, the only thing I was familiar with was Patreon. Like, I'm like, I'm not going to start my own website. Like, I don't know how to do that. And I don't, I only have, um, I only have one model right so a website would be i yeah. think <laughs> so i'm like so screw it patreon it is and i just i just did it right just because it was the only thing i was familiar with but still so that i could have something to offer i scrambled to produce as many miniatures as i possibly could and what a lot of people don't realize is that all the no not all probably like i would say about 80 percent of the stuff that I have available for the Dread Elves was made within one month. And I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this was without, and this is because I had this conversation with somebody else um, two days ago about rigging. I had no rigging. <laughs> and what that is, is it just basically, and I'll tell you how unfamiliar with it I, yeah, I am. I'll probably explain it incorrectly, but it's basically like this skeleton that the computer generates where you create like a base body to start from. And it's, it's like the standard, you know, anatomic man uh, figure and the skeleton is inside there. And then you move like the joints and it just repositions the body for you. Um, right. Yeah. So it makes new positions and poses a lot easier to do. Well, I didn't do that. Uh, in fact, I still haven't to this day done that because it, <laughs> like I've heard the word thrown out there before, but I thought it was for like animation, you know, for like movies and stuff like yeah. that. Right. So, like, Well, that doesn't apply to me, but it does. And now it's going to make sculpting so much easier and faster. Um, so if I'm ever feeling on like that much pressure, shoot, man, I might be able to do like a hundred miniatures in a month, but I won't do that. Uh, <laughs> Only because well, you sacrifice quality, right? Like you don't go over it and look at all the details you missed and, and all that or mistakes or just there's a lot that bothered me with like the previous sculpts and I can't really get rid of them because now they're out there and people are selling them. And if people like them, that's great. But again, it, that's one of the, those are some of the ones that I've deleted from my, uh, my mini factory because I just, I, if people do like them, I kind of would, still not want them out there i'd rather they be under a different name or something because i'm trying to just you know change the image of that yeah no, that's that's fair that's all but yeah all right. so here we are. yeah um uh, okay uh shall we move on to the hobby spotlight right. um not that we haven't been talking hobby so far <laughs> but um i see that you're uh painting away <laughs> Short introduction. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. I mean, I I, I I I kept asking questions, so it's it's no problem. And it was a good talk. So, this is the paint desk ramblings, after all. But yeah. um, you're painting away there. What's what's going on? Okay, so this is 
this is a miniature I'm actually very, very proud of. And you may have seen it, maybe not. Um, I just realized, let me grab a rag real quick for my paintbrush. Um, this is a El Cid model that I sculpted. Um, let's see if I can do it. There's a camera over here. All right, yeah, a mounted knight. Ah, uh, maybe I can't really focus. Uh, on here. Try putting your hand behind it so that it, it gets a larger surface to out of focus too. Can work sometimes. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> I don't know. I never use this, but <laughs> okay. And then where's the horse? What did I do with that? It's a pretty important part of this model. <laughs> Weird. I don't think I moved it at all. Oh, it's, up. it's right behind the phone. And then here's the horse. I guess I could put it together. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it doesn't really do it justice, this thing, especially because it's so blurry. But I'm pretty happy with this cult. And it's very dynamic. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's what I'm going for. I like, I don't know. I mean, there's there's always improvement, right? So. Yeah, so that's what I'm doing. I painted this guy yesterday, last night, and yep. hmm, he like Cam was also not doing this justice because it looks a lot better. <laughs> yeah, but anyways, yeah, yeah. But anyway, that's what I'm working on. Yes, um, that, that, that's that's one of your own sculpts, then I assume. It's is it is it available for for purchase? Oh, uh, not yet. It, it will be soon, but. Um, yeah, this one I'm very happy about. It's I just finished it, I think two days ago, oh. um, and the yeah, it's, it's very popular already. Actually, I'm, I'm getting a lot of attention for it. And um, gosh, man, see, this is where it would be great if I was using the computer instead of the phone, because then I can show you like some renders of it, because it it shows the detail a lot more. You you can send me that, those files afterwards, and I'll, I'll superimpose them into the video. That's no, no okay. problem. Okay. Well, well, the best part is it's not so much the renders I was going to show off. It was uh, it was somebody else who I've, I had already sent the files to. Uh, he's actually a very, very good painter. Um, I don't want to say his name because I don't, I don't know if I should, but um, he's very good. And uh, he's a big fan of a couple of my most recent sculpts. One that I just kind of threw out for free so people can kind of get an idea of what I can do. And that spread around pretty well. And so now I was motivated to do another. Well, then I was talking to him. I reached out to him because I was talking to a friend of his. It's actually funny how that turned out. And um, so him and I have been talking quite a bit. And he's given me a ton of ideas for future plans and all, a Kickstarter and all that. So that'd be sweet. Nice. And, uh, so he's, he's super excited about this model that I sent him. And he sent me pictures this morning of his prints. And he's got an amazing freaking printer, man. I was blown away. I was, I, he sent me pictures of the other model that I, I had sent him. I got a hold of, right? And he printed. And I was like, that doesn't even look 3D printed. That's, that's insane. <laughs> yeah, and then the, he sent the, the high-end printers are magical. <laughs> yeah. And, and then he sent me pictures of this one that he printed. He finished printing last night, and I saw it this morning. Or his morning, right, or something like that. But he, uh, and I was looking. I'm like, gosh, man, that looks. Not only does it not look 3D printed, it looks like it's a bigger scale. But it's it's this, <laughs> it's crazy. So now my goal is to get one of those freaking printers, but in time. All right. So yeah, yeah you, that... you got a little bit curious there. Um, like you paint your own uh, own sculpts a lot. Uh, do you often like you design it, you print it, and you paint it, and then do you go back and adjust things you found? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I do, <laughs> fact, I'm gonna do that. With this guy too, and mainly because of his feedback. He's saying um, the face and the beard could use a little sharper detail, like the deeper creases. And I'm like, shoot, you're right, man. I'm looking at it right now. I'm like, how did I not catch that? And I think part of me was just everything else came out excellent, right? Like to what I would, I'm like super proud of. And I was so excited to just, boom, throw it out there. And I'm looking at it, and it's not bad. Like, you can see the details, but it would make a painter's, uh, you know, a lot, his job a lot easier if, if yeah. I sharpen 
Mexico. So that's what I'm going to modify right now. I, I think that's that's like a really big advantage actually because sometimes I notice that sculptors are not painters and and like there are things you can do as a sculptor to like adjust it better to painting. Yeah. So right. And as for uh as for 3D printing, man, it's just as simple as opening up the file and then modifying it and yeah. then you're done, you know. Whereas sometimes you can't really do that with green stuff, you know. Yeah. You can you overdo it and you're well now you have to add more and then go back and it's just it's yeah, and, little... and, and you can't like test paint halfway during the process either so it's it's a yeah it's a big advantage with the with the 3d sculpting for sure yeah so right. that. nice okay for myself i'm working on a little imp um i have I forgot to put the, the lighting behind that, that that camera, so you can't like see anything here. <laughs> let me, yeah, let, let me try and do like that. There you can see something yeah. at least. Cool. Yeah, I can see. That's good. That's clear too. Um, so this guy, I'm gonna use him as an imp in my um, cultist warband for skirmish. Oh, um, nice. yeah, your and, game. Your rules. Yeah, my I'm game, my rules. <laughs> no, oh, you have no idea how... <laughs> you probably do, because I volunteered to do that cover and all, or whatever. The, yeah. Art. Uh, I'm very... Oh. I yeah, it, it's it's in the works. It's it's on the on its way to becoming official. Just so you know. Okay, I was like, I'm not sure if I can say that. I'm going to score. <laughs> so, okay. But I'm very yeah. excited that it's going to be like an official thing, because it's, it's going to be put out there more. Yeah, and... Uh, yeah looking forward to that too yeah that's good that's um, great, <laughs> no, no it's fine so this mi miniature is from uh Vird, uh miniatures uh the uh, malifo game oh yeah uh, Sweet. yeah that's it's awesome. a, yeah they make some great miniatures really yeah. nice injection molded plastic stuff um quite expensive i mean uh, this was yeah, it's it's just three models in a box in the box, perfect for my my, my needs in a in a small small warband size game, but like getting a whole unit uni of, of imps from this would set you back a lot, and it's only three three poses, so maybe not ideal. But man, I like these yeah. sculpts. Yeah, yeah. It's funny how much uh, <laughs> a beautiful looking sculpt can make you spend, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that ain't that no. the truth. <laughs> You, yeah, you look at some, you're like, oh, okay, five dollars for that, and then all of a sudden you end up with a different one that costs you like thirty on eBay. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. That's... Indeed. All right. That's... So, um, painting away here. Um, I will get back to uh, how these are doing at the end, and um, this time I'll, I'll re remember you in the audience uh, if you're watching. Uh, I mean, if you're on the audience, you are watching. But please uh, let, let us know what you're p painting on, if, uh, if anything, during uh, the time you're listening to, to this. Yeah, oh, this is live? Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> this is we... not live. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, ha I have had some thoughts in, into, into trying uh, making it live, but I haven't taken that step yet. I'm not sure if that, that would be interesting to people. So I, I have to, sh to look into that, I think. But uh, when, whenever yeah. people are watching it, uh, if you are painting, please let us know in the comments what you do, you're working on. Because that's always nice engagement. All right, moving on to some news. Um, I think we'll start with some of the uh, miniature news that has happened the last little while. So uh, we have from Avatars of War. Uh, I think it's a re-release re of this model. It's a uh, Alistana bear for dwarves. Um, unfortunately, they don't seem to have a big image available on their site. But um, yeah, this is what what we have. Cool. Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt about who's going to be the Alistana bear when this guy is uh, <laughs> is on the table. <laughs> uh, so yeah, he's really really nice. Uh, they also have some sort of super spring sale, it seems. Uh, it says they're <coughs> saved 30%. Don't know how long that lasts, so if you're interested, go check them out. The link will be in the, in the description. Um, so yeah, um, 
cool stuff. Uh, I also think that they have um, rest restocked a bit on their plastic uh, kits. So they're, they're Dwarf Rangers and the Dwarf Seekers. Uh, they've been out, out of stock for a long time, but now they, they, seem, to, they seem to be, ba be back, which is great to see. Um, those are some good options for plastic dwarves. So, uh, Wait, they have plastic miniatures also? Yeah, they, they do. Uh, not a lot of them. I think they have like three, four, four kits, something like that. Uh, but huh. uh, they have some. That's good. Uh, I don't know. I think they also have some resin um, stuff as well, uh, because I think most of it is metal, one metal dwarf in this package. So yeah, they do do a, a few different things. Um, so that's that. Next up, we have Lubart Miniatures, um, who have released a bunch of new uh, Dreadelf stuff. Uh, so these are their uh, Judicators with big swords, and they also have some new uh, Obsidian Guard. And I think the big news is that they have started selling 3D sculpts as well. I mean, it seems like the direction every company is going in, in these days. Um, so now you can buy both their uh, resin costs and their 3D models as STL files. Lubart's got some really cool stuff. Yeah, they sure do. I, I'm not sure if they have like made everything available as uh, 3D yet, but uh, I mean they have some worm and stuff here uh, that you can buy the SL files for. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they are expanding, which is good because I think they've had some issues with like keeping up with dem demand with their costing. So now that maybe some of the demand can be supplied using 3D files instead. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah, it looks like they're getting busier and more popular, so that's good. Yeah, for sure. Um, I don't think I have any of their, their miniatures yet. I should get some. I have a bunch of Avatars of War stuff, uh, but they, they have been a long, uh, around for a long time, so it's not that surprising. All right. Um, that's it for the miniatures, I think. I haven't seen any other exciting stuff recently. Um, so, but we have um, um, two big news from the project instead. Um, there was a balance patch released, or like the, the uh, 2021 balance patch was turned gold with some minor changes in it. Um, did you see any, did anything in that um, uh, catch your eye? <laughs> not exactly. Um, I don't pay much attention to anything other than Equitain, to be honest. But <laughs> I do sometimes. If it, you know, some topics just explode, man, for whatever reason, and they become interesting to follow. Yeah. But uh, I don't go out looking for like. Okay, I play tournaments, but uh, it's weird. I'm a I'm a pretty competitive individual in general, but when it comes to this stuff, not uh. I care more about like uh, the narrative, the background, the lore, and all that stuff. You know. Yeah, uh, I, I, I think I'm actually pretty similar in, in that regard. Like I'm board games and stuff like that. I'm super competitive, but this game, just yes, pushing stuff around and having fun for the yeah. most part. So I don't, I don't study other books, man. Like I don't, I yeah. don't care that about it. You know, like I just <laughs> now. Um, you know, it would help my opponent a lot. I understand to make you know make the game flow smoother if I knew his army just as well as he did, right? With less questions and all that. I'm sure that gets annoying. It, I mean, it can, right? But yeah, but I just, I just don't care. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, 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 that's you know, I love learning the, the the snippets of background of why they designed this or what you know, like that's cool. I you know, I may not tell you all the special rules, but I can tell you why they have them. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I think that, that that's something that the project is or, or the fan base is a bit short on. So good, good to hear that there there are those people as well. Yeah, but um, no, I'd love to hear your your thoughts on all of the changes and the hot yeah, I, I I I haven't looked into it too much, and there's just two things that really caught my eye. Um, one is the the uh, Vampire Covenant update, which 
I think, uh, caused some angst in the community. Um, I mean, uh, don't every update do? <laughs> um, yeah. But I think in this case, it was a bit of a bad optics um, because like they, they reached out to the forums in every sub forum and asked like what people thought needed a change, a look at, and uh, there were three things that each community could pick out. And in the case of the Vampire Covenant, uh, the most voted for thing was changing the core requirement to uh, 20% instead of 25% for mm-hmm. all variants of the army. Uh, yeah. Which the response was just no, we're not going to do that. Too. Which I, I think is like fine. I, I wasn't expecting them to change that. Um, and uh, personally, I prefer it at 25 percent because like the core is the cool part of the army. But I, I'm weird that, that way. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I will uh, per, honestly like to, to see every army increase like five percent percentile units in core rather than keep seeing it decrease all, all the time. Yeah, I agree with you on that. I have a different view on that, but it's it's along what you're thinking. I think. Just a different approach to it, I think. Yeah. But I think we agree ultimately. Yeah, I think that's fairly common. People want to to use the core units, but uh, like they are yeah. often so bad that they don't aren't worth it. So I, I would rather see them being useful, of course. Yeah. Um, okay. But th- th- there was also like w- it was asked to reduce the cost of uh, wraiths. Um, in, in units, uh, and they also said, no, we're not going to do that. Too. And then instead they decreased the cost of the, the Baronites, which was fairly nice. But it was a, kind of a weird optic that they just dismissed one of them and did another thing, which wasn't really asked yeah. for, but still appreciated. But one uh, but <laughs> one thing they just dismissed out of hand and did nothing. So it, it was a bit weird. That's uh, I, well, I, I, they, they did two good changes, and I'm happy with that. So I can't yeah. complain too much. You know, I, 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 okay, so I'll give them that they're trying to reach out to the community, right? I mean, there's that, because yeah. that was a big complaint for a while, like, oh, you're ignoring yeah. the community. Which I don't think was ever necessarily the case. I just think um, their reasonings for not, imp- I mean, let's be real, you can't give everybody everything they want, because everybody wants a bunch of different things, and then yeah. you'd end up with a really weird book, or, yeah. you know? So, so granted, there's going to be plenty of people that feel that they're never listened to or that they weren't listened to. And and sometimes they are listened to, but they're not given the response they want, you know? Yeah. Um, but I think, and obviously that was an attempt of like the staff to, you know, try to, try to fix that, I guess, or like that, that perception of them that they don't listen, right? Like, okay, let's, let's ask them what they want, see if we can implement them. Yeah. But But, the the downside of that is, of course, that if they can't implement that, it just looks even more bad. That's my point. That's my point. That's my point. You gotta, you can't just be that way where you're, you just got to think it through and you got to, you got to be realistic with expectations, man. And I think they just didn't have enough foresight to understand like, Look, man, if you're going to ask somebody what they want and you give them the impression that they're going to get it, <laughs> be ready for... Yeah, I, 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 I th- think yeah. They, they did foresee that, but uh, still, I, 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 even though like all the backlash they got from this, I think it was a good call, actually, to ask the community. Um, so, yeah, b- I'm not... Because one of the things that did change that I, I'm really happy to see, uh, which mm-hmm. was the most asked for by the commu- that community, was for the Wards of the Dark Gods, um, where they upped the unit cap on the warriors, common warrior unit. Uh, so you can have, is it 35 now in a big uh, un- unfavored unit and uh, oh, wow. um, 30 in a uh, favored unit? Um, which was like the most asked for thing and uh, like bigger units of warriors is cool. So I think everybody is happy really. Um, yeah. Yeah, I agree. And, um, I, and I, I think it was u- useful there actually to see how much com- the community wanted that. Um, yeah. Because th- no, they have sure. been very hesitant to do that because it opens up a certain build of the army where you can mm-hmm. fill the core with just a single unit of warriors. Um, so, but seeing how many wanted that as an option, I think convinced them that maybe it's worth the risk of 
of every core section being being the same, which I don't think it will be, but we'll see. Yeah, um, I think you're right. Yeah, I agree. That that's cool. Um, and I'm not opposed to them reaching out to the community at all. I think you kind of need to, right? Like yeah. to you don't totally disconnect yourself from who's actually using what you're producing. Um, but what I'm what I'm still convinced on is that I don't think they really thought through at least the way they went about it because you you have to put some sort of disclaimer like hey we're not saying we're going to give you everything you want especially if it's yeah. something really weird that because they can't consider everything right That's, yeah yeah no I, I mean if everybody asks for a point reduction of the most powerful unit in the book like that's that's not going to happen <laughs> even no matter how many right. people ask for it so right you know you know and I think I think they just they didn't do a, uh, maybe the the best job making it clear that this isn't a guarantee that they're going to get yeah. whatever three things that the majority and there's a way to go about it right like give some examples of why beforehand like just kind of yeah uh, and and uh, but but that, that's definitely something that they can improve and I think like uh, yeah <laughs> now they have the examples <laughs> yeah okay. I guess so right. so. Yeah, and uh, there's there's certain things I, you know, I'm not too crazy about as far as the way. I'm not gonna say their communication because I think they're doing a fine job communicating, and I think they're, it's always improving, right? Yeah. Uh, it's some of the language that's used that can be pretty vague. That I have a, it's a pet peeve of mine, um, and that's just in general. Like I don't like vagueness <laughs> because it's. I feel like it's a way of. Um, how do I put it? It's like, uh, it's to me, it shows uh, a reluctance to commit. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I don't I'm... really respect that in the sense where I interpret it as that as, okay, so you really don't have a vision is kind of what you're telling me <laughs> in certain examples. Um, yeah, and I can see that. So that, that's my impression. Now, it may be wrong. It may be completely wrong, but when you know when some people react and it's not just me and it's one of the things in my head right now because i'm, I'm thinking of examples of it um but when certain people react a certain way because of that it's it's like well you can't keep doing that and then expect different results like you or or you know like you just got to accept that people are going to react a certain way when you use certain language because they interpret it differently because it's so vague yeah and that's it you can't blame them you can't argue you can't double down on it and say that they're wrong because if it's vague they're not wrong it's it's their interpretation and it's your fault for not making it very clear right yeah yeah and, communication and is a two-way street yeah and if you have a very clear vision well then you should be very open and upfront and direct about it so nobody misinterprets it right because then you're gonna that that's the only way to avoid this whole like oh but you said this and technically we didn't it's like well yeah <laughs> we didn't say anything so they're not wrong either so it's kind of like that's where i just i don't know if that makes sense but it's 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 very annoying um yeah it kind of drifts into like common politics which <laughs> is a bit annoying <laughs> yeah i'm getting started but but that's the whole point right it's like yeah. look i would i would have i would have more respect for somebody who tells me look this is what we're doing um, and this is the path we're going. It, it would, and it would make it a lot easier to see when my suggestions don't fit because, okay, it clearly doesn't fit that vision. All right. Yeah. Uh, and I, I can understand if they're just, they don't want to put off like a chunk of a community or whatever it is, but it's like, okay, it's going to happen eventually if you don't give them what they're asking for. Um, and the only difference being you're afraid to tell them that right now. Right, it's almost like a band aid you just yank off versus something slowly you're like doing because people have in the back of their mind that I don't think they're gonna do this or I don't think they're gonna give us this, but I'm not sure. So they're kind of holding on to hope when maybe on the other hand they're like there is no hope. We just don't want to tell them that right now. Does that make sense? Yeah. No. no? And, uh, and I feel like that might actually breed some some more like. I don't know. It it can give fodder to to like the the angry people online. <laughs> it does. Shoot, I've lost my cool plenty of times. Don't get me wrong. Like, oh man, I'm, I'm not. 
not justifying what I've done. I, I have a temper, but <laughs> <laughs> I think I've done a good job curbing it, to be honest. But <laughs> that comes with my other background. But yeah, so. But it's just, I think people respect in general people that are upfront and, and honest and direct rather than wishy washiness, right? Like there's a reason yeah. that there's certain connotations to that type of behavior. And you should never you should never use that, man. Just just be <laughs> be straightforward. Look, we're never gonna do this or we're never gonna do that. Okay. And I'm sorry if you were looking forward to that in the future, but it is what it is. You know, and people can make peace with that sooner and they can leave and go play a different game and then realize like ah, it's not that big of a deal and then miss it and come back. Right. Yeah. I think a lot to be honest but it's 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 almost like interpreting it as like you're kind of toying with my emotions kind of a thing right <laughs> Might yeah, take it, it can, can, can be that way for sure you know and then that's going to make it even worse so yeah that's yeah so the, i think just to bring it right back to the original point i think the way they implemented that or right, the intent of that was great. I just think they should have just been very, very, very clear and open. Like, this is not a guarantee that you're that what you guys do come up with, you're going to get. Um, and we would love to give you examples, but we can't think of every possibility that you would come up with that we wouldn't want, right? Like, we just don't yeah. know what we don't know, right? Yeah. So, but, you know, just try to be reasonable is, I guess, like a message that they would. Um, yeah have to put out so that's it and a lot of that's on us too right like we got to be reasonable we can't just take advantage of them putting making a good effort you know to to reach out to us and then be like oh now's our chance to really get what we want <laughs> yeah no. right it, so it, it's on us too. yeah of course right. all right moving on to some more some other news let's say <laughs> uh the, yeah. the, the ninth scroll had a new issue recently mm -hmm. did you see this yeah, uh, I saw the part about KOE. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. <laughs> no, um, that that was a good article. It contains what? some new art from you, I think, that hasn't been show, shown before. Uh, I'm yeah, thinking of, of the uh, Equitane Warband that you kind of painted up for uh -oh. a certain project of mine. <laughs> you know what's funny is uh, the one they showed. Obviously, it wasn't finished. Yeah. Um, I have. A more developed version of it that's still not finished but um and it's yeah so anyway but yeah the, that is that was that was not um uh, that was uploaded to show you um it was never intended to be used <laughs> and they do a lot of, they do that a lot because whatever is uploaded is available for any of the staff yeah members, right um i think there's a there's a there's a ninth scroll that's still available that has a cover art of uh, something. Yeah, uh, the, the 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 sorcerer, I think. Yeah, the like, warrior sorcerer. So the, obviously finished. Yeah, like where, his, like, his his staff is just like his star top yeah. is just like some swordy lines. Like, oh man, please don't do that. <laughs> it makes me. I feel like it makes me look really bad, but it's okay. There, I mean, they liked it. They picked it obviously because they liked it. So I appreciate. Yeah. That. I mean, they they are just excited to to to, to find find some neat art on on the forum. Like, oh, this I want to use. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, man. Yeah. So they could do, do, do a better job of, of like vetting the art, but I mean, that's it's already enough work putting together that, that scroll. I I I think like we shouldn't dump yeah. even more responsibility on them. That's true. That's that's a ton of work that I don't want to be honest. So I'm not going to blame them for yeah making a few mistakes here <laughs> and there. But yeah. yeah. So but but what there, did you? There was uh, the uh, Equitain article, which uh, it was like an in interview. Uh, I read that. Yeah. yeah, about the um about the coming book. So that's nice. So yeah. if if you, you, after this episode you're still not satisfi satisfied for the Equitain, then um, you can go check that out, audience. Yeah. Um, there was also a good article about the Rotten Factory, the miniature company, and and like his background and how he he got into sculpting uh, and the miniatures he do, uh, which was pretty neat. Um, I was quite amazed to re to to read that his com company was started. Uh, 2017, which it's like I can't believe it's that young. <laughs> actually, yeah, <laughs> it, it feels like I, they, they've been around like forever. So, yeah, I remember some of his. I think 
were some of his first sculpts, or at least the ones that he put, or they, I don't know how many it is. I think it's one guy. Yeah, it's one guy. And, uh, man, they're great. And I actually yeah. have some. Um, but uh, I, think, I think he started off as an artist for the Ninth Age. No, is that right? Uh, or... He has contributed art. Uh, I'm not sure if that's how it started, but... Uh... Oh, okay. That was my impression. I was like, man, that's really cool. <laughs> yeah. But I... Yeah. Yeah. Now, I, I have a, a few of his sculpts as well, and yeah, it's really high quality stuff. Very good, uh, very creative mind. I, yeah, I like that. For sure. Uh, so. so that was neat. And then I want to spruik the last article of the scroll, which is my own, of course. Um, <laughs> so um, this is uh, an article for the um, Feedback Paint Shop. Uh, I need to wor workshop that name, I think. Um, but it's um, it's going to be a recurring article. Uh, I've put up a thread on the forum where I'm asking people to submit their painting, painted miniatures for feedback, and um, there will be an, an article in in the in the next role where um, those uh, submissions get some some uh, comments and uh, helpful uh, ideas about the next step you can take on your painting journey. <laughs> Um, so I'm hoping to, to to see some activity there. Uh, I think it can be a fun fun, fun thing. But of course, I lay, like I understand, asking for feedback is hard. It's really hard. Um, yeah. Because you're like you're putting yourself out there. Um, so it's it's a lot to ask for. I understand that. But um, I, I I promise to be kind. <laughs> and uh, like the whole spirit of it is is to yeah. to take the next step. I mean, we're all. Uh, we're all painting. We're all um, trying to improve, and to touch on the previous topic, like you should well, hopefully make it very clear that that's the intent, as opposed to yeah, uh, yeah. And I, I, but uh, and I, I I try really try to to emphasize that in the text that I that I've yeah. posted and, and try and make sure. But like I can only only promise so much. It's still a big step to to ask for feedback, and hopefully, uh, like uh, there has already been one, one submission. I'm hoping for some more for the, the first scroll, but I, I think that once we, people can read the actual feedback, and if if I manage to get, do a good job at it at least, uh, then more people will be willing to participate in in the next scroll. Um, I think it will. I can see that becoming pretty popular, man. Because yeah. people do on different parts of the forum, right? Already, but yeah. if you can channel that into one, you know, then you get everybody who's interested in that. Yeah, and then it just people really open up. I think that'd be great. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm hoping it can can be a hit. Uh, we'll see. What? Uh, before I forget, I'd like to ask you because I want to touch back on a, a previous topic. Well, about the the interview and in the uh, of was it Crocs, right? Um, from the Ninth Scroll. Yeah. But what do you, what armies do you play? If you don't mind me asking. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. Uh, I have uh, two uh, fully painted armies that I that I play. Uh, that's Oaks and Goblins and the Vampire Covenant. But then I'm I'm working on a Undying Dynasty army and an Empire army and a Vermin Swarm ar army at the moment. Um, stupidly enough, well, I'm working on them all at the, at the same time. But uh, they <laughs> soon I, one of them will be playable at least. I thought your Empire army was done because that one I'm familiar with the most for some reason. Yeah, I, I yeah. think that's the one I've been posting the most about on the forums. Um, it's the one I okay. take. I put a lot of effort into that army. Let's yeah. say it that way. Sure, 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 sure. Um, but it, it it's I think I have enough models to actually play a four thousand five hundred point army, but that's gonna be an army of like fifty percent core or something like that because I like painting core. <laughs> yeah, if so. you don't mind, if we have time at the end, I'd love to talk about that because that's a big thing for me too, the core. But yeah, so. Hopefully. Yeah, that could that could be a, a whole different show, I think. Uh, but uh, I can n note you down for, for participating in another in another episode, perhaps, because that's yeah. uh, that's an interesting discussion for sure. I agree. Um, but yeah, th those are the armies I'm working on, and then I'm like now I'm painting, painting a demon, but that's like just for a little warband. Maybe someday I'll try out demons. I I like the book a lot, so yeah, we'll see. <laughs> That'd be uh, cool, man. Yeah. For creativity, that's a great army. To yeah, I, I mean, uh, just working on this little guy, I'm like amazed, but about how many things I can. I mean, there, there are no rules. I can do whatever I want. 
Exactly. Yeah. Uh, well, that's so that, that's that's uh, interesting. Uh, I'm curious though. Before we leave that, well, we kind of already did, but anyway, I'm curious if you had any. Uh, well, shoot, we're headed straight into that. So it, about the KOE book, because I see that's the next topic. But I'm curious about the interview. Like, I'm sure you read it and all that. And if you yeah. have any expectations of yourself, of your own, or what he said, or does that kind of match your um, expectations of what the lab was going to bring up? Yeah, a bit. Bring, um, I didn't think there was that much more info in the article compared to, to the guidelines, a little bit, of course, but... yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. It, but it was it was a good article. It was. I enjoyed it. Yeah. All right. Sorry. Uh, kind of yeah. derailed. And I, I I think it it that article was more like about how they are designing it, not like what the end result will be. I, I guess. <laughs> um, so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but um, let's dive right into the main topic then. Yeah. Uh, the Kingdom of Equitaine. So um, the guidelines are, are out, have been for a month or so. Um, fairly extensive. I think they are some of the most extensive gu guidelines they've released so far. Yeah. Um, which is good to see. Uh, but um, I wanted to, to start this discussion off with like a, a premise that I've been working on in my head for a while now. Um, which is, I mean, looking at, at the other books that Ninthage has released and, uh, and trying to extrapolate from that uh, what, uh, what they're going to do with this book. Uh -huh. <clears throat> and that's the focus that they seem to have on paths. On, which, on paths. Uh, like what I mean um, is like an individual in, in this faction, what they can do to like progress and, and, and stuff like that. The most obvious oh. is, is the words of the Dark Gods with the Path of the Favor and the Path of, yeah. of, oh, yeah. of the Exile. <laughs> like, they have a super clear structure of you start here and you end here. And, and yeah. there are some some other ways you can take and, and, and stuff like that, but, but there is a clear, clear prog progression. And they did this with the, with the Dread Elves as well, uh, with like um, having the, um, the Dread Prince be the nobility, so it's like removed from everything else he he doesn't participate in the rest of the society pretty much and then there's mm -hmm. the um uh uh the legion legate who's like yeah. the mil military general who ha who started out like just like an or ordinary soldier and he's just progressed to, to become this great leader yeah and so i think that's something that they seem to pay a lot of attention to it's interesting you put it that way i i know what you're talking about um, I looked at it a different way. Not, I didn't look at it as paths, but I looked at it looked at it as different like themes within the yeah the book, and yeah. that I'm excited about. Yeah. Uh, so, so where I'm going with this is uh, like the Equitain have a feudal society uh, mm -hmm. with like the king at the top and the some like archdukes beneath that and the dukes beneath that and all they all are all landowners and and it's trickled down through, through barons and other titles and to right. like the, the lowliest of knights would just he, he owns like a small ca castle and uh, lords over a few peasants and, that, mm -hmm. and he has a, an armor but that's about it and a horse uh, and like those lower uh, uh, ranks in, in the feudal system those are like your ordinary knights like the uh, uh, knight as, and everybody starts out uh, like a knight aspirant almost regardless of, of their, their standing i guess in in the system um yeah and then they can become a, a knight of the realm if they survive for a, a bit uh, but i don't think that there's only like an experience difference there that there's no birth um thing mm -hmm. but other than that than that like the you can't really have like if if you are fairly low in the in in the in the social order here in the feudal system, you have very little chance of like advancing to becoming a duke. Mm -hmm. Like th that we know from from like real world history, things like that did yeah. happen with ranks uh, with knights climbing uh, and, and gaining more land and, and like stuff like yeah. that. But it, it's rare. it's not a, really a fluid system where people move around. Uh, a right, lot. it's more of the exception. 
yeah. So, and and in this char character section, we have like the Duke, uh, and and that's like that, that's a high highborn uh, dude um, who has had access to a lot better training and and stuff like that. So he is naturally better. Also, probably survived a few more battles and has more experience and stuff like that. Though. Mm -hmm. And they have revealed from the in in the background that the the paladins they are like the the chosen warriors of the of the king uh, selected from like the best of the best so that's like yeah. the, the top you can aspire to as a common knight you can become a a paladin and advance through that um but you can't really become a duke um so so that's that's like the normal feudal system mm -hmm. but then you also have like the quest stuff where you can go uh, search for the Grail and eventually find it and come back as a, a, a Grail Knight. And it says in the, in the little background we have at the moment that a knight who takes up the quest forsakes his land. So yeah. uh, I guess that means he's no longer a duke. I mean, if a duke decides to go <laughs> run off and do this, he's no longer a duke. Yeah, loophole that. He doesn't own, uh, own any land, yeah. um, and I, I, I think, like socially, I think this makes it more probable that people who are like the second-born son maybe goes questing instead. Um, yeah, because like they, had, they had they had roles. I mean, obviously not questing knight roles, but they had roles like that for the different uh, order of sons. A lot of families would do that. A lot of cultures did that. So yeah, like the lowest level of of the nobility was a common thing that didn't have um like there's no more land to give to that son or something he joins like the clergy or something or yeah something like that right yeah of course so it could, i could see i could see um you know one guy's gonna inherit the land and and he's gonna become a duke and and the other son's gonna inherit this piece or maybe he forsakes it and gives it to his other brother and he goes on a quest or something like that yeah but and, and maybe the firstborn son does it sometimes i mean that I'm sure that happens, and and yeah. then it, it falls to the second son instead, um, like inheriting the Ooh. land and stuff. Are you are you getting at to could there be a duke with a questing duke then with that? Yeah, I th that is yeah. a bit what I'm getting I mean, at. That, like, yeah, I don't see it from a background perspective that this guy is, to have like a lord uh, go out and quest and like yeah. it, it, part of it is just naming convention because I I think a questing duke is impos impossible yeah, I mean, <laughs> like from a background perspective because they yeah. are not a, no longer a duke uh, yeah I mean, but i also that's, think that's I think maybe that. it's something they're gonna explore rule wise as well to try and um ah. differentiate uh, to have like a separate unit entry for the questing hero or i don't know what it's gonna be called yeah uh, who, who <laughs> represents both like highborn people who who decide to take up the quest and the sort of failed questing knights who just keep questing their whole life and, and get really good at it <laughs> and, yeah. and like ride around and slay monsters all, all day long. Um, that's, because that's it, the, the thing is that that's not a duke, so it's it's right. it shouldn't have that the title, uh, right? And and the same yeah. thing with the grey knight because I don't um, I don't see it as when a guy gets back from the quest having found the grail, that it's just gonna sit back in his castle and lord over, over peasants it feels like he has a higher purpose than that yeah you're right yeah you're you're absolutely right that makes a lot more sense um now consider that we may not have any of that too you know yeah so, so uh, that might just be how they tackle it like you know what let's just get rid of it and we'll have different different stuff yeah i i, th I think that would would make sense yeah and i think it's also good from a des design perspective <clears throat> because one of the issues at the moment with like having the duke and be able to upgrade him to a questing vow or a great vow um is that it's a bit tricky to balance how like powerful and how unique these guys to be should be uh, you can correct me if i'm wrong with but at the moment you only really see the questing duke like the normal duke and the grail is quite rare yeah yeah, um, I think so. I think and, that's and, the, and that's awesome. unless you have the space to do, really design them differently, they are going to be very similar. I think that's 
solely in part because of the uh, what it's a it's a plus one to hit to fear. Yeah. And their bastard sword, right? Yeah. Uh, because that in combination, plus one to hit in combination with like the supernatural dexterity and the might and all that, it's like it creates such an obvious strong combo, man. It's hard to say no to that, you know. Yeah. I think that could be fixed. It's not just in in the uh, the Duke the oath or what is it? I'm sorry, the questing oath and the Grail oath. Yeah, yeah, it's a problem. It's a combination with the other things too. So if you change those other ones, well, then it's going to be looked at a little differently. But, yeah. but, 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 you're, but, you're, but I, I think point. it's it's uh, the differences between these different um, upgrades. It, it's going to be hard to make them that unique. I think so that you will end up with pretty similar characters. If you break them out into the separate entries, you can do a lot more design on them. I agree. I fully agree with that. I actually started a thread with that in mind, intended. Yeah. It kind of kind of died out eventually, but it, it gained some traction, and I think my, uh, my point was made pretty clear, and I think people understood it. But you're right. I think it needs to be... It goes back with the whole vision, man. Like you gotta, you have to have a vision and work towards it. You can't just leave it up in the air and take everybody's input and try to mix it all in. It's like, well, yeah, you have to take an input from different visions. It's going to be weird, right? Yeah. Um, Another benefit of this, uh, I think, is that at the moment, if you if you take up a um, a knight of the uh, of the realm and compare it with a questing knight, uh, the questing knight is I think yes, better uh, uh, offensive and defensive skill and and uh, the same strength. They're, I think um, they're the same. They are... they're, it's the same. They're both four, right? Uh, both strength four. They're actually the stats are identical. I think the only difference is I want to say their agility is four. If I remember correctly, all right. Because it's for Lauren is yeah, four. But, but they, they, okay, they, they are very similar. But the, the step to, the, the step to gray light is a big bigger because you get another extra attack and extra weapon skill. I think. Yeah, and an extra for resilience. And, and when you take, yeah, resilience as well. Yeah, that's right. And when you take it on on the Lord, you only get the extra offensive and defensive skill. And then oh, and they get five attacks, which the yeah. Lord doesn't. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, and they, but and it's it's a bit ugly design that this this upgrade does different things on different units. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's been brought up a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So that is another thing that I think they can avoid by splitting these this characters into different entries, which also it feels kind of fitting to to the Equitain army to have a whole host of different legendary heroes that you can choose from. Oh, yeah. I I fully agree, man. For me, it was... Uh, let, me, let me tell you in general what I had suggested in that thread. Yeah. Um, for the Duke and the Paladin to ultimately be, like, equal as far as... Um, I would say fighters, but f- with different roles. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah. No. So the way I pictured it was the the Duke is, you know, he's a he's a he's. I, well, let me start with the Paladin. I guess I was imagining the Paladin being a more specialized fighter because what I had in my mind was initially what I'd read, and I don't know if this has changed. Um, I don't think it has, but their role is to kind of root out like heresies and vampires and stuff. So they're targeting specific individuals, right? Yeah. So I'm thinking, oh, perfect. They can be like the character hunters. Uh, Ooh, here, yeah, uh, that's good. He, he, right? He's the dual master. He, he goes yeah. in and, and, and dual stuff. Yeah, he focuses on single targets for whatever reason, right? Yeah. Um, whereas but not the Duke, mon- monsters generally, generally like other characters. Is... Well, I was thinking monsters too, just in the sense like, individuals he's looking for one particular target right that's his goal he's maybe Uh, maybe could have some like mechanic to to choose a a specific target that i'm gonna go kill that that's my quest yeah that's my purpose this match well that's where i was kind of getting at because i was thinking a questing paladin and a grail paladin can differ in in those in that sense yeah um you know you can further break it down like that but a paladin like that's his like maybe i don't know I mean, it was all generalist. Like, I didn't have a, a particular goal. I was just trying to come up with, like, concepts, right? And yeah. a way to... Yeah, no, that, to... That, that, that's, that's better at this moment, too. <laughs> Focus yeah. on concepts. Because... Yeah, exactly, yeah. 
Well, anyway, so then, whereas the Duke, he's he's not concerned about that stuff, right? But he's a more, um, he's just, a, he's, I don't want to say a common soldier, but he's more common than a, a paladin was, like a paladin. Yeah, yeah, I, is, I would right? see the Duke as a, like a leader, mostly. Yeah. I mean, he, he's been raised to be a lord, to, to right. rule over other people. Right, so on that note, he... As a kid, you know, he takes part in his dad's battles, right? And he's good at fighting other normal men, warriors, if that makes sense, right? Yeah. So on that note, um, you have the paladin who's good at, like, dueling and, and characters and fighting monsters, you know, like the, the single powerful individuals. And then you have the duke that's good at, like, the rank and file, so to speak. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. You know? And you're right on the whole leadership thing, right? Like, that's, his, that's what he's been bred to. But um, I kept that in mind when making the suggestions and thinking of like, well, he shouldn't be like a noticeably great leader because relatively speaking, sure, compared to a paladin, but not in general as far as like, yeah, that's an empire. Not, 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 yeah, not, not compared to other arm armies, perhaps. That's, yeah, that's true. Yeah. So that's kind of where I meant, like, I don't want to call him like he's like, oh, yeah, he's the leader and all the rules revolve around making him a leader. I'm like, well. No, nah, I don't want to do that because that's that's a that's a very imperial thing where like a character is notable because of all the leadership qualities and yeah. roles. Yeah, he, he shouldn't yeah. be he shouldn't be be, be a, an enter that you take just to be the general. He he should yeah. maybe often be the general, but that's not his only role. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But uh, their focus because it's heroic, it's a fighting army, it's a knight. It's that's still a general theme, right? So a different role as a hero, right? So he comes in and he's still like a beast in combat, but not the same as the paladin. Yeah. Right. And again, for people watching this later, this is just all my opinion and from what I've kind of come up with to try and justify everything and it, that I read up until this point and um, to try and differentiate the two and to make them both like equally capable fighters, but with totally different roles, you know, yeah. like so. It, it, the the paladin's not going to get you a ton of combat res by killing a bunch of trash models, right? So maybe he only has a few attacks, but they're really strong. Um, or maybe they only gain their bonuses against in a duel or against a character yeah. or against a monster yeah. or whatever. Whereas the duke has maybe a bunch of a lot more attacks, but really only effective against rank and file in some sense, right? So now you have two clear, distinct roles. And then yeah. to add some flavor you can differentiate them further somehow and we already mentioned the paladin he can have questing sort of rules to where maybe he's only good at monsters and then the grail is a little something like that yeah you know? i hadn't thought about the paladin much actually but i wonder how he, he fits into this uh, my idea with the, the the different paths that a guy, guy can, can take because i kind of wonder like the paladins are, are the kings dudes <laughs> the, the king's chosen knights who, who do his bidding and, and special quest for him uh -huh. i wonder if a guy like that can also take like the general quest or be a great knight i can see it argued that those interests clash so that you can't be both um mm. so uh, i think what, what i'm getting at is maybe we'll we'll have four character entries the paladin the duke the questing <laughs> hero and like the grail legend uh the, the living saint or whatever yeah uh and and then try to find different roles for them but that that's i mean four heroes that's quite a lot to, to find roles for i guess yeah i mean maybe the easier way would be to start with what roles does this army need and then what can we draw from the background to plug those in you know like which ones fit those better yeah although they do say that they are are doing background driven design so the background comes first uh, oh yeah that's so, um, but yeah, the, uh, it could, could be hard. But but uh, the thing I I could see is like the, the duke is the infantry killer and the general. Um, mm -hmm. The paladin is the is a dueler who who kills um, who kills other characters perhaps, or maybe this thing with like point and click design. I don't know. Uh, yeah. The the questing hero is is obviously the monster hunter. Uh, that's gonna be his his thing, and the Grail maybe just all around awesome. <laughs> I don't know. You know what? That's hard because, yeah, that's true. That's hard because anytime you get some some sort of generalist 
anything like that becomes very expensive, you know? Yeah. But that yeah. particularly great at could, one. Yeah. I, don't know. I wonder, That's... could you zero in more on the, on the like mythical aspect of him and like make him a wizard? Could that <laughs> be cool. I'd like that. <laughs> that, that like, that would be awesome. Um, I think, <laughs> you know, like, well, when you say that, I, I picture the, the stereotypical fantasy paladin now or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, healing and turning undead or whatever i love that stuff but but i, I don't know i don't know what yeah like... I, I, it seems like a, a big step so maybe uh, maybe not very likely that they'll go there but like that could be a way to to make really make him different from the other other knights yeah that's a good point you know you don't you, no one else has bounce spells or whatever but you yeah. know and if you want add that little utility then you get the grail or something like that but i don't know i don't know how that's gonna play out um um, shall we move on to virtues, which uh, we're talking about characters a lot. So, what we, do we think will happen to virtues? Oh man, I have no idea. That's. <laughs> I mean, that's in, in in the guidelines, they, I think they finished off with saying, like uh, the chivalry and and stuff like that could be represented through virtues, but not necessarily. It doesn't have to be in the book. Yeah. So I. I, I... I could tell you how I. I have no idea what the direction is with that. No clue whatsoever. No yeah. hint. Uh, no. Uh, 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 like we, we, we said it, this at the start, we don't know. We don't have any insight. And I think more importantly, <laughs> no one knows at this time. They're not that far ahead in the design. Uh, they, you know, so. I'll, I'll admit right now, because I don't want to mis, I don't want to mislead people or, or straight up lie. Like I can see a lot of the background, not all of it, uh, that they're coming up with. Yeah. Or maybe I can see all of it. Maybe there's some... I assume there's some threads that I, I don't have access to, but I do as part of the, the staff as a art member. Right. Yeah. So I do see a lot of background. Um, uh, but... to, to, to make it out in the open. I do, I see a lot of that too. Uh, I choose not to look at it because I prefer to read the books, uh, but I have access oh, to it. Oh man, you're a much better man than I am. <laughs> no, I, not I, only I, I did I... look at it uh, like, Way back and thought it was re really interesting, but then I, I like realized I, I like reading the the official stuff more. It's better written. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, <laughs> I'll I'll have to throw this out for everybody watching, just to kind of also I think this will help the staff in general. Like people, a lot of times people think that all staff members have the same influence and uh, yeah. powers, I guess, to influence influence the book. Um, I'll tell you right now that, uh, and this is mainly intended for everybody else. Cause you, if you can browse through the background threads, you might have seen this, but not only do I read the background, but I take part, uh, against policy and rules, by the way. So I've gotten in trouble for that. Um, and I don't have, um, as a, I don't have special privileges other than that. I can see it, but I'm not. I think I'm technically not supposed to. I think it would just be too tedious for them to really um, decide, okay, what can this person see and not see? So they just don't do it, you know, because there's a lot yeah. back. Yeah. There. A lot of things that I don't, you know. But anyway, uh, I'll admit I do take advantage. And I've been really open about this where I'm like, look, man, I've gotten in trouble in the past. Uh, and and I've gotten warned about, <laughs> not in the sense like, we'll ban you, but in the sense like, dude, we don't want to block you from this thread, but you're not supposed to take part in this. Yeah, and I've broken that rule multiple times, um, but only to say that I'm I'm a player, man. Like more than I'm a I'm a member of the community more so a me than I am a member of the staff in the sense that all I really do is draw and then give it to them and then they can use it. That's it. You know what I mean? And I yeah. have to have access to that so that I know what to draw. That's it. Yeah, and the rules, design, all of that. I'm I'm blocked off from it. Um, I'm not allowed to. I'm not a member of that. So I don't, I don't, they don't ask me for my input. They don't, um, they don't. Now, as a member of the community, a player and a fan of the faction, I think a lot of players can relate to me or maybe I can relate to them, vice versa, right? As far as like being passionate about the, the faction they're uh, a fan of. Um, so the fans that get worked up and they cry out like, hey man, you guys are... I don't know what they say, but you know, like they feel a little disconnect from 
uh, or maybe a little disadvantage of who has influence on their, mm -hmm. family, so to speak. So anyway, I'd like to say for anybody watching that's one of those people is like, dude, I get it. And I'm one of those. And that's why I've gotten in trouble. Because me, um, my involvement in the Ninth Age ultimately hinges on one faction. It's it's Equitain, you know? Yeah. Uh, because it's it's the only motivation that I have to, 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 to... Shoot, the only reason I draw is because I, I wanted to draw for the, the Equitain book. And look, I've drawn so much over these years ultimately to get me to this freaking point uh, <laughs> it's not a lie. that's not even an exaggeration yeah. the whole goal is like oh man i want to draw for this freaking book and then there was no timeline or anything back then and i'm just like equitains do it's gonna happen and then five years later it's happening finally <laughs> so but between then and now i was like yeah i could draw so you know because i'm motivated and i'm pumped and i'm excited about the project and all this um yeah everything dude just revolves around Equitain for me, um, and I've and I you know I've said this in the past, and it's not it's not untrue it's not a lie. Um, I could have said it less harshly, but and I kind of mentioned it right now. Like what my involvement in the Ninth Age, and not just as a staff member, but as a player, revolves around Equitain. Man, like if this book just totally just warps into something that I didn't sign up for. It's like man, I don't. Why am I here then? You know, does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, I don't no. play anymore. Um, so all that to say is like, I've taken part in those background <laughs> discussions just because I'm like, dude, you can ban me for all I care. <laughs> um, if I got nothing to lose, if I lose this faction, so I want to make sure that it's not like just destroyed in a sense, you know? Yeah. So, so, so yes, I, I, I am a member of the staff and I can see all that. So when I talk about, um, yeah, I don't know what they're going to do with the virtues or this and that. That's the truth because they haven't, that's not part of the background. The be, They're thrown out there as part of the background, or rather the designs and, and rules and concept, that's totally separate. That's a whole nother, that's the lab yeah. team, right? And that I don't have access to. So I have no clue what they're doing with any of that. Um, I have no idea. At this point, I'm back, like the community, I'm just like, what the heck is yeah. going on back there? What are they doing? You know, so. Yeah. Yeah, we're, well, we're just guessing. <laughs> we are, dude. It, we're not, we're both staff members, but we literally are just guessing. A lot of people think we know more than we do, but we don't. We really don't. Yeah. Um, we can talk about, I can talk about some of the background, you know. I think. I'll do it anyway. <laughs> yeah, uh, we, we have a little bit released already, so. Yeah. Uh, and, I, and I, yeah. But, um, uh, but the virtues, I, yeah. Man, boy, did I go off topic. <laughs> but the virtues, um, here. So with that, I don't know what they're doing, but I can tell you what makes the most sense to me. I'm sure it's going to be something at least close. Could be way off, but I would, I would bet a little bit of money on it. Is that they would split them up throughout the whole book? You know, instead of having seven virtues for the fighty characters that they can all pick from, because that's that's where it gets hard to balance, right? Yeah. How do you one? that's not going to be OP for one and then super underpowered for another. Yeah. And so anyway, um, I would see the virtues maybe being applied to maybe like one character can select from a few, another character can select from a couple. Um, and then the other ones apply to maybe units that, that can pick from or something like oh, that. Units. Does I that make thought of that. That would be cool. I guess. Kind of like the, the, the uh, marks for warriors in a sense. That's yeah. kind of what made me think of it. Yeah, that, that that's, that's that could be definitely be an option. Would be fun. I, yeah. I was th thinking that if they go down this path of like exploding the character section into four different knight uh, characters, mm -hmm. that maybe it's a bit much to have virtues on top of that. But yeah. designing them more specific for the different knights could work. Um, they can split the blessing into some virtues too as well i don't know that yeah. could affect the whole army or just i don't know but there's ways you know yeah ultimately they're just rules yeah so how you want to apply them and that's it put a background spin yeah. on it i mean l l like rules wise what they are they are more customization for the for the characters um but it, yeah it, it, actually making it like a customization is tricky because you have to balance it so correctly otherwise it just becomes uh, an auto include it's it's so easy to to go for to go down okay. that path yeah it's hard 
don't yeah. either. No, so that that that's a, a tricky one, I think. Um, uh, they're going to have them because they're already in the guidelines, and it's a big part of KOE or Equitane, right? Yeah, uh, it's in the guidelines as something that they can include, but it's yeah. not necessary so I, i'm not sure oh I, I took it as they're gonna make a presence just no promises on how yeah um so yeah that's that's an interesting one all right um should we talk a little bit about the sub factions that are going to be in the book yes uh so that's... like the knights we already talked a lot about um uh, well kind of yeah, mostly mostly the characters, I guess. Um, yeah. So like the the it, it's it, it's in the guidelines that it's gonna gonna be the like largest po portion of the book. Forty five percent of the of the entries in the book will probably be revol revolved around knights. Um. So one thing that I'm curious about, um, about knights. And this also touches on on the the path thing, and also the words of the dark gods and how they they designed, which is this that you have the different different levels of of warriors in the words of the dark gods, and then they all have like they can you can have a warrior on a horse or on a chariot, and yeah. then you can go up to a chosen, and you can have the chosen on a chariot, or you can have it on a <coughs> horse, or a carcadan. Yeah. Um, in Equitane, you have the Pegasus Knights, but it's right. like uh, stat-wise, it's only the Realm Knights who ride them. Why can't yeah. quest Why can't the Questing Knight ride a Peg Pegasus? Mm -hmm. So maybe they exclude that. So we have Grail Pegasus and uh, Questing Pegasus. I don't think so. I don't. I really don't think so. But it's uh, it, it, I, I, what I think they will do is they will maybe like do a background expl explanation to why the Pegasus Knights are like more of a separate thing. Yeah. I, I can, I mean, off the top of my head, I can see, I can see reasons why. Like maybe, you know, I don't know, maybe it's just, it takes a lot of resources to maintain that animal, you yeah. know? And when you're on a quest, you don't have those resources, yeah, you know? Maybe. maybe they eat more than usual. Maybe they got... I don't know. <laughs> I love it if that's the explanation. They just need more food than you can provide during a quest. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. You're out <laughs> hunting nonstop, so that's the worst explanation. But <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know what they they, they eat. Like, maybe they, they don't, need a lot of attention. They I don't only know. eat apples. That's the only thing they, they eat. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't provide those apples when you're on the quest. Uh, yeah, no, I don't but know. Consider, but consider the uh, the actual cost of maintaining animals, like in real life, right? Like, yeah. for whatever reason, the more exotic an animal, maybe it just takes more for some reason. Yeah. And they could find. Animals, yeah, but I mean, they, they can they, they can they can definitely justify that. I I can also see it like being an exclusive order that like you don't, you can't take the quest if if you do that then then you're out. Some yeah, or maybe like the early Questy Knights, some of them did have, and then they realized, hey, we're going in caves a lot, and there's no room for them, so. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, just stuff like that. But it, it just it could be something that evolved into it. It could even just be plain cultural, you know? Like, that yeah. That often has a major effect on how things happen. So it yeah. could that would be a pretty easy explanation. And then you have to fight the people that just want the models and tell them that <laughs> You know, yeah, that, that... they have talked about though in in the gu guidelines to have um, like more creatures in the army, but uh, but very strict, strict about uh, there being no non-mounted creature. So maybe you can have like the Pegasus Knights are like uh, are the the base level, and then you have the the questing um, level have a different mount, and mm -hmm. the Grail have an, an, a, even a, another different mount. Uh, Maybe. Yeah. Well, it's sort of like the Karkadan then and the and the and the knights. But at the same time, you got to go right back to balance, right? Is that gonna? They can come up with those cool concepts, and in the end, they're like, "All right, we ditched them because we had to keep changing the rules to make more balance, and it didn't fit the background that you yeah. know some." So, I don't know. I don't know how they approach that. Yeah. Uh, but but it, 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 it it's it falls into this into this thing that the ninth age does like to have like all these options filled out to to have it 
like consistent in that way. So it um, the character mounts too, you know. Yeah, and that's not even a unit. Yeah, and 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 of course yes, the character because you can have at the moment a a, a questing duke on a Pegasus. You just can't have a normal knight on a Pegasus. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. maybe maybe they solve this by making it if they split the characters into separate entries, then only the Duke has the Pegasus and, of, option, perhaps. Yeah, that, that's the, that's one way. And then they they do this explanation, fluff explanation of why you can't quest with a Pegasus. They hate questing. Um, yeah, yeah. pampered animals, you know, like... <laughs> something like that. Yeah. Uh, no. All right, so I think this, uh, I mean, I, I don't think there's that much to say about grain lights and questing lights. I think maybe one direction they will go is that the grain lights are going to be really awesome. Um, so notice that, now correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure in the in the guidelines there was no mention of grail knights, but like sainted or something like that. Yeah, they said something like that, yes. So it could just be a name change, right? Um but yeah, who knows where they take that, man? Um, one thing that I'm pretty sure is available in the background too, and just so that we don't lose track of of that is uh, uh, the Knights for Lauren. I want to kind yes, of talk about. yes, yes. I've seen some talk in the forums about maybe them them dropping the Forlorn Knights because they didn't didn't see, really see them mentioned in the guidelines. Uh, and they aren't really, but uh, I'm I'm like 95% sure that they're going to be in a book because we already yeah. have, we have have background released on the Knights Forlorn. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, so I don't think that. Uh, so 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 they they are this uh, like originally they were this, these knights from uh, Brisson, um, one of the regions in I think is in the northern parts. I'm not sure if that's. Uh, yeah, that's great. Uh, and and like they had some big disgrace happening in their past, and like a lot of them decided to forsake their horse and go around fighting on foot. And yeah. today that order remains, and it's still a lot of knights from Bursan, but also other knights who have uh, dishonored themselves and choose to fight on foot. Yeah. Uh, so right. like that's already in the background. That that's not going anywhere. Um, yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. I don't know how the rules are going to change, but I'm sure they're going to stick around as, as the name, at least, you know, there's still yeah. going to be yeah, like, like foot, foot nights are going to be a thing. I think I'm, I'm sure uh, rather um... that kind of bothered me when it came out because I like, you know, like I said, I don't like vagueness. I don't like, um, I like every faction to have it's like very distinct culture and, and, you know, character and identity and all that. Yeah. And up until, and they, they came out a while ago, granted, but um, that kind of changed, in my opinion, the image of um, uh, Equitane being, you know, like a culture of like horse knights riding. on horse yeah. riding. Yeah, like kind of, kind of, kind of. They kind of yeah. stand as. And it, it, it was, I think, it, that was perpetuated by by the fact that for a while they were really, really good. So, like the co most common way to play Equitane was like a big. Death Star of of uh, Forlorn Knights, and and that didn't feel right. Yeah, it depends who you ask, right? But <laughs> yeah. I agree. And I don't think they've changed. I mean, they're still they're still they still make a great Death Star. And no, not a Death Star. I'll say Anvil because um they negate devastating charge. Yeah, you know. Yeah, that's a good thing. Huge. That's a that's a very strong role. But um, but yeah, like for a while. I was, for me, it was just them being named knights that bothered me. I'm like, well, is, look at the description, all that stuff. You're saying knights on horseback, famous, and but then you get like these knights on, um, you know, horse or on foot making a big appearance. I'm like, I just want everything to make sense, man. Like that was my big <laughs> thing. You know, call them something else for the most part, and then we don't have to worry about that. But whatever. So they'll they'll fit them in, and I think the background. I was gonna say not the background. The image of the farming kind of has to change to accommodate that. But look at all the, the the description of the army released and all that on like the main page. It kind of goes against that. So <laughs> I don't know. All right, we just got to stick to it. That's all. Um, so all right. Um, 
So shall we move on to the next sub faction, the Ordos? In the yeah. Uh, which are the war machines and the support units uh, with buff synergies. Um, I mean, the, the war machines are pretty self-explanatory, um, but like the 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 buff synergies, I know. Is it like the um, uh, this core, the, this uh, grail thing that you carry ar around the reliquary? So it's um. Is that gonna be part of it, Drew? You know what? I don't even remember seeing that being written about at all. Uh, no, who knows if it's, it's not mentioned really, but I, I wonder if that's like what they're gonna go for. Well, I mean, even in like the background thread. So who knows what that changes to? Uh, but it, what I was gonna bring up is the past was just like some relic of a of an old Grail Knight, right? In the previous, you know, the old world, yeah. but even now as well. Um, as I understand. I think that was official but uh who knows if that's going to remain the same or if it's going to be just any holy thing or or it could i don't know it could even turn into like a what do you call it a uh like a war platform or something i don't know yeah i have no idea but uh yeah that's something that i don't i haven't really put much thought into that come to think of it i hope it's something that also affects both like infantry and cavalry like maybe like in an option to accommodate different um so that it's seen in two different style like list styles yeah. right like, yeah one thing they wrote in in the guidelines is um that you're gonna have what was what, what is it called uh orisons i think um, yeah so like small spells so maybe these are gonna be like a buff machine that that pumps out like small spells healing spells they talk about um, yeah like the origin of that word is basically it just means like a prayer, you know. So yeah, it's it could be like um, I would imagine it's something similar to uh, uh, prelate with his balance spells being the prayers, you know. So it could just be like a like a weaker, cheaper bounce spell, or but like from a wizard conclave, or like a unit just automatically does that. I don't know. I mean, yeah. the ordos was a it the ordos is a is a it's a pretty it's a term that encompasses like a pretty broad group of uh what am i trying to say like a, just a section of the army right so it's not just the war machines but it's also i think it's pretty obvious now it's going to encompass the um the current um peasant crusaders right and it's also going to have like some sort of unit that does a spell or a buff in some sense right the the yeah. horizon orisons uh so the Ordos is like a, it's it's probably my guess is it's going to be a category in the book, right? Like Ordos, and then you're going to have like the Trebuchet and the, whatever, right? And then yeah, maybe I, 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 it doesn't. I don't. They say that these like sub faction won't necessarily correlate to to that because that's mostly a balance thing, like the the sections in the book. Yeah, yeah that's a good point. It could just be like a, the whole sub thing. Yeah, but. I don't know. I don't know what yeah, else. I, 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 to me, though, the, that's like the the biggest mystery of this of this um, sub faction, perhaps with one exception. So, uh, but moving on, we have the uh, the militas. Uh, if I pronounce yeah. that right, the peasants. Right. Um. So, I uh, that's I think it, it's not going to change that much. I think like they, they're going to have some peasant units and they're going to be pretty crappy, but they have a lot, a lot of numbers instead. Uh, one thing yeah. they did talk about that maybe uh, they should have like some way to not be that problematic when they are in the same combat as the knights. Yeah. So not bleed combat rests as much. Hopefully, uh, man. <laughs> and also they mentioned that they shouldn't be able to keep up with the knights. So if you if you want to go <laughs> smash people in the face with, with your army, you can't have peasants because they will just slow you down. Yeah, that's odd because the current design is the opposite intent, yeah. right? Get yeah. A movement. So th that's yeah. it. Definitely seems some, something that will change. No longer that movement boost for. Trump. However, keep this in mind. They also don't want KOE to be a sit back and shoot army, right? They yeah. want us to be aggressive. Okay, so there's that. Yeah. And then, uh, like, again, man, gotta have a clear vision. Just <laughs> all these loopholes and. So we'll see. I I don't know. I suspect those guidelines 
or either i don't know i guess they are finalized but i mean they're guidelines right they're not rules so yeah i, I, I mean the purpose of the guidelines is uh not primarily i think to inform the community but like those are made by the rules team to tell the the, the guys who are designing the book what they what right. what what what, uh, what they can and can't do like yeah um, yeah yeah you're right so but but we also get access to to it because it's cool 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 things to read yeah um yeah. I... but yeah um so peasants maybe some changing there with how they interact with with speed and stuff like that uh but yeah it's inter interesting that, uh, what you say about them not being I mean, how are you going to use peasants if if they can't keep up, and and if you're not meant to be a stay back army? But maybe like, I think uh, with this with play styles. Uh, I mean, if you have a little bit of shooting, you can force the opponent to come to you, but you can't, you, you can't kill them with your shooting. But you can like dictate where you're going to fight a bit more, uh, or maybe like march up slowly at first and then. The peasants take the the enemy charge and then you counter charge and stuff like that. Yeah, um, but let's I mean let's let's look at it from a practical point of view. If um, if we're not supposed to be a shooting army, right, or be effective with range, then no matter what you do, that that whole like, or I'm sorry, let me. I, I kind of started with the wrong point. If we're not supposed to be a sit back and shoot army then by definition our our shooting can't be any good like <laughs> because it obviously gives us the option unless there's some sort of penalties that are applied to our units if they just don't move period then i can see that happening right yeah um so on that note let's say they don't do that give some penalties if they without movement right kind of yeah. because that could also encourage avoidance which is what they don't want so yeah. there's that whole right um then then what are you going to do with the shooting units right and then and then like when the book's being played and play tested and they see that they're not taken well then they're going to need some sort of buffs in some sense or some sort of thing. and it's it's that whole like that you end you, that chain of like reaction to what's going on and the design that ends up changing them to somewhere where they're totally different than what was initially um proposed in the guidelines right and I, I think that happens with like multiple books but you just that's that's where it's that whole like you got to have a clear vision and you gotta you gotta stick to it you know and, and just be realistic about it don't don't mix and ma don't say like you can't be avoidance you can, we can't have you not be avoidance but at the same time we can't have peasants not catch up but you have to be aggressive but it's like dude just, <laughs> I think it's for you. You know what I mean? It's like there's a lot of stuff that. Yeah, I, I, I think that uh, peasants not being able to keep up that could be uh, an issue here. Um, I don't think it's a conflict. I, I, I think mean, it's a contradiction. <laughs> to, to, to me, the guidelines are, are very, very. They really seem to describe what I imagine this faction being. Um, the initial ones that were not, I don't think, were released to the public that I saw, and they were only slightly modified. Uh, very slightly, but for whatever my impression has changed on them. But at first, I was like, they're almost describing it, the exact same faction that we have right now. And that was a pretty big disappointment because it almost felt like they were going to ask for basically an update, a big update to the current yeah. book as opposed to a new book, which is what I'm looking forward to. But, but they've, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I really don't know how to look at the guidelines because I look at background testing, which is where I don't take part in all say that right now but i read like the feedback and all that and based off of the guidelines they make changes or suggestions are rejected based off of the guidelines so they take them pretty seriously right like they're pretty rigid yeah. it sounds like. so it's like all right you guys are painting your, yourself into a corner with some of these so yeah you know. uh, hopefully they can like adjust when when necessary of course but i think i mean having guidelines is good because it, it helps with this as you said you want to carry yeah. the, the faction to be unique if you You're don't right. have, if you don't have guidelines then anything goes and then you the, the factions end up being very similar i think 
yeah you're right but, which is maybe like uh, early ninth age uh, a lot of faction got like extra units and stuff like that the uh, yeah. foot knights included knight, knights forlorn um, yeah. and like that's a result of not having guidelines pretty much yeah yeah you're right that's a good point that's a great point yeah so, but um, let's move on to uh, the perhaps most controversial part of the book, of the sub-factions, the Fae. Oh, the Fae. I thought you were going to say a different one. But yeah, you're right. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. So, well, this is like uh, the Green Knight at the moment. That that that's, yeah. that that dude is definitely going in the Fae. He's supernal. Uh, mm-hmm. But it's, they seem to like be open to expanding this part of the book a bit. And yeah. Then, I mean, I I have no idea where to, where they're going with this. This is like what the the big question mark for me. Yeah, um, I'll there, there was some questions asked um, in like a private message thread, which I don't want to spoil, but uh, they're they're definitely. Um, uh, expanding the background in a sense, uh, it's not just going to be Arthurian Arthurian legends, right? All right, but it still is going to be Arthurian legends. Yeah. Uh, however, I think what I can say to give people like a hint towards thinking in the right direction, and maybe maybe you and see what kind of ideas you come up with right now is just think of like old Celtic. Um, I mean, just think of the origin of fate, right? Like, think of the old Celtic yeah. legend. Um... I <laughs> afraid I don't don't really know that much about Kel- uh, old Kel- Celtic le- legends. <laughs> yeah, so there was, and only because, and I don't think I'm spoiling anything. This isn't official, and this isn't anything I've seen. It's not even part of the background, but I suspect they're going to touch on this. Um, and with yeah, but, the simple, yeah, they go the ahead. simple. Uh, sorry, just the simple drop of the word "fey" would people that are familiar with it would immediately think of like maybe the Seely and Unseely courts of the Fey, right? Yeah, and so yeah summer court and the winter court and i think people that read the dresden files which is a pretty popular series immediately recognize that um so you have like two sides of that world and you have like the summer and the winter court so you have like the warmth and friendly uh you know still mischievous uh summer court and then you have like the cold uh not necessarily evil but just cold and frigid and uh, culture of the the uh the winter court you know yeah so they're probably going to draw from that you know yeah that, that that sounds cool so yeah it is it's pretty cool it's interesting right um and i think a lot of people are going to be excited about that because there are some people that want more fantastical elements of the book yeah i have understand it though that uh, you're not one of those people I'm not one of those. I'm not going <laughs> to. You want um, knights. You want knights and yeah, know, so Arthurian yeah. legend. <laughs> yeah, I did yeah, but I, 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 I think uh, I mean that's that's really the the big problem with this book. I think in des- redesigning it because uh, the community seems very split on that point. Uh, if, yeah. if they should add more or not, but I think the important part is is I mean if they add more, make sure that. The, army still functions very well without those fantastical mythical fey elements i don't think it's yeah i don't think it's gonna be much much different than how it is now to be honest where you have um you don't have an army full of pegasus and hippogriffs and and green knights all you know what i mean like it's not does that make sense so i think the proportion of of fantastical creatures probably going to remain roughly the same which is not too crazy you're just going to have more options for them yeah that's a good way of tackling Uh, one thing that they mentioned is like um they can have non-character characters so like Mm -hmm. uh, uh, single model knights uh, like the green knight who are not characters uh Mm -hmm. in from the character section uh sort of like um mini monsters so maybe that's one one thing they will they will expand with other flavors of the of the green knight. Maybe as you said, like one of the the spring knight perhaps, or and one winter knight, something like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That uh, I could 
man, I could totally see that happening. And I think that would be a very cool, uh, even for me, a very interesting and fun way of, of, of them doing that. I would love to see that actually like um, only because um, so Taki is, I think the one in charge he's ultimately, I want to say he's ultimately the one in charge of the background. He's he put together some great stuff, man, that I was really excited reading and all that, but everybody in the background team is taking part. Right. Yeah. Um, but I know he uh, meant, I know he's a fan of like the Faye, that whole like uh, mythos, I guess to call it. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, means to be honest but anyway so um so i think that's ultimately where the inspiration for the new fey units is going to be drawn from and i think that's really cool it's actually you know you can see that in other like video games and i've been a big fan of that stuff too yeah um but i don't think it's going to change the army like in general like what i was initially concerned about like you know where 90 percent is like centaurs and like yeah no no that that's it's got like knights like now, I say, forty-five percent of the army should, the entry should be yeah. like plain knights. So. Yeah. So yeah, you're right. I don't want a fantasy crazy army. Not because I don't like it. Like I love, like you know, I'm a huge, uh, I'm a huge fan of other armies. Like I love seeing them. You know, and I don't want to play an army or a game where those aren't there because I want them there. I just, yeah. I just don't want to see them. That's yeah. All. Yeah. No, no, that, that's fair. Absolutely yeah. fair. Um, all right, one sub faction left, which are the uh, irregulars, the outlaws, the mercenaries, and the adventurers. So the questing knights yeah. fit into this category. Yep. And the knight character category. There is overlap between these. Yes. Um, and I think maybe the brigands are in this category, perhaps. Yeah, if they're still in the book. Yeah. Um, they're one of my favorite units in terms of background as well. Yeah, all right. That sounds interesting. I don't think we have seen anything really on the brigands so far. So, um, yeah, that's uh, true. Yeah, but yeah, um, 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 like maybe some more mercenary stuff. Um, I wonder how. I, they... I think. Um. Okay. So. Another thing that we can kind of touch on, and I don't, you haven't brought it up yet, is the witchcraft. Yes, let's let's talk about that. That's an interesting aspect. Only because I think that's a part of um, the uh, outlaws section and all that. I think that's how, I think that's how they're going to implement it. I think that's definitely going to be a sub faction, right? Like you're 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 calling it, yeah. and I think it's only going to be associated. I'm sorry, I think witchcraft is only going to be associated with that element. If I had right. a guess, I, 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 I thought, thought that was going to be more of the Fey thing with the witchcraft, like tricksters in the woods and stuff like that. But maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe it, it's the. It could be both, right? It could be yeah, like, yeah, um, like, like we said, it, it, there is overlap. Yeah. Well, I think, I think the Fey, I think the lady, right? She's not, she's not, they haven't called her the Lady of the Lake, like ever, if, nope. in case someone hasn't noticed. Um, I think that's what, uh, that's what the fate is like that's that's part of it you know like yeah. that's she's from another realm right she's a goddess well yeah. i think the fate people from that maybe, maybe she's even Suna. that's part of the fluff some some say she's as, actually as another aspect uh, aspect of the of the son god don't say that I'll tell that's you right thing. now that's gonna be my fluff right there <laughs> <laughs> yeah i kind of like that theory but at the same time i can also promise you that the background will never say that she is an aspect of her. I no, think no, it's, it's I always going to be shrouded it. in mystery and, and that that's, yeah, I, I like that's that good. like like yeah, the, the gods that. are so weird and yeah should it's be. good you should yeah it's good it should leave people wondering and and players arguing with each other yeah. that's how you draw interest right you need that conflict and yeah discussion otherwise it's all laid out everybody understands it agrees on it and it's done nothing more to yeah. talk about yeah uh, but yeah, so the witchcraft, and uh, I think there's okay. So there's got to be like some sort of hero characters in that um, that group, right? Um, yeah, uh, maybe. Some background that's gonna. Uh, I'm not gonna say any names, right? Like I'm not gonna spoil anything. But there, it's gonna have to do with another part of the culture, obviously, and it's not just gonna be um, just gonna be like the outlaws like that's not part of the culture right or unique to the culture like every 
culture has outlaws or whatever. Right. Yeah. Uh, so um, one thing that I wanted to bring up that I think, shoot, who said this? Um, and this is what I'm hoping for. This is more me than anything. But I want to say somebody on the lab team kind of hinted that that's probably what's going to happen, or at least a consideration to kind of split the book into more fay, less fay, or more fantasy, less fantasy. Yeah. Um, maybe I'm just drawing conclusions on my own. Who knows? But anyway, so uh, there's going to be different regions within um, Equitane as far as the background goes, not necessarily in the book, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Each region has their own culture. Because a big thing about Equitane, the background, is that they're very individualistic. Yeah. So you can and, see it. And, and I think that this has been mentioned a little, a little bit with the, with Brisson being like the most distinct and, and weird, like the the, the forlorn uh, origin. Yeah. Uh, I think it's even been mentioned that they have a very strong elven influence in their culture from like the highborns uh, uh, living in that region long ago uh, like yeah it's been mentioned that their language is like partly elven although none of the oh. no, no elves will ever admit to that <laughs> <laughs> i like that um i think i, I want to say yes that that's basically the gist of it although i know it's like that was pretty old like that part of the background was way before any of the lab stuff started yeah. so i don't know how much of that they're going to hold on to or maybe like kind of make it a little less um how to explain it like it's still going to be there but they're not going to emphasize it just so that they don't yeah. they're not elves in a sense M yeah. maybe I, um but i'm pretty sure they want it to be like that northern culture is what i'm calling it and that's that's where i'm kind of getting at is like Bresen is going to be more unique yeah from elves as well like just just playing unique in the world of the ninth age like not not oh it's it's equitane mixed with elves as opposed to the yeah south. no no that... i mean it's they, they have had a long long time to to develop their own thing but like taking inspiration mm -hmm. from both the equitane culture and, and the broader equitane culture and the older yeah. elven culture well because... consider that i think and this isn't me spoiling anything this is this is my own opinion but i think um the fae aren't actually related to elves at all no like, I, I don't get that impression either um I yeah think it's like the, 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 these um the, they're supernal i think yeah um, and so like from the other side of the uh, veil um but mm -hmm. but this elven inspiration of, of brisson that was like uh the the highborn uh elves lived in that area thousands of mm -hmm. years ago but they they left long uh, like several a long time ago um yeah so it's, it's just well, like remnants of it uh in, in, yeah. in the culture that's left no, no, no elves at all like yeah there's got to be some sort of elven influence there right yeah but um but i think the yeah, fate... yeah because as you say the the celtic insp inspiration is going to be a thing here and yeah the like uh, the, the the white islands of, of kalida uh, 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 eldon um that's like the British Islands in 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 this mm -hmm. map. Uh, so like there yeah. is a, 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 a some sort of overlap between these cultures, with the yeah, the Celtic and the Highborn. Yeah, you're right. Um, there, the north, like the Brezen area, Brezen. Yeah. Um, is going to be I think like the the heart of the Fey religion or like the ladies' religion. All right. Yeah, I believe, right? Yeah, and that's that, that the whole thing, right? Um, so I think that's where that I think that's um I think that's where there's going to be a split of like so I was talking about regions, right? So the north is like heavily like fate influence is my guess, like or fey religion influence. Yeah, and then the south is probably going to have like more of a Destrian or empire influence or something like that and i'm kind of guessing something like that yeah. um and to be honest i'm i'm hoping for that because yeah i just like that better to be honest so i'm hoping that i can build a theme here's here's my here's here's the biggest thing like i don't want to have to just completely ignore the ninth age fluff and then um yeah no, build, no i understand you know what i mean yeah but if, let's say it's all like face stuff and that's it um then I probably would. <laughs> so, because I'm, 
not too crazy about it. Like I like it, but I don't I don't want to be it, right? Like I don't want my army to be that. It's kind of yeah. like I love vampires, dude. That's my second favorite faction, the vampire covenant. Yeah. But I don't have I don't have an army. Um, I just really, really, really want people in my group to have it. Uh, <laughs> of the models that you know, I just I'm not Yeah, no, that, that's fair. Yeah. So I'm hoping that in the background there is a major split or maybe not like a fit in an official sense, but like a cultural split in all of Equitane. And yeah. I can pick from the region that has the less yeah. of it. And then, and, 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 and that's like the, the ninth edge. They do make sure that you, you everybody has a, a place in, in, in the, in the setting. So I, th- I think yeah. that's definitely going to be the case. Like um, yeah. they, they won't like exclude Even... people like that. Yeah. Well, even better would be if it actually manifests into the rules. That would be. Yeah, cool. that, that that could be cool. Yeah. Maybe so, a, a bit down the line as a, as like supplement books, stuff like that. Yeah, that would be that would a be good. Cool. Focus on it. Yeah. So. Right. Yeah. Uh, I think we've touched on most things from the guidelines. The one I thought you were going to bring up was Lanceformation, because that was pretty Oh, heated. yeah. <laughs> Good. That <laughs> one I forgot. That I one we have to about. talk about. Yeah. Um, all right. So so the guidelines say that the Lanceformation is a an option for at least some of the knights, maybe not all of them, uh, to uh, like have a more narrow front edge um, and uh, mm-hmm. like be able to field knights in a different, in a different um, uh, yeah formation basically so what do we think is going to happen i'm i'm very skeptical that it's going to be big changes they, they did a poll on this on the, on the forum like what people want yeah and like it, it, to me it, it seemed like people really love the current <laughs> last formation yeah so. they do uh and not just it's it's going to be three wide uh, there's no doubt about that yeah like, I'm... yeah no. I, I mean, maybe the signs that you, you you can choose to be four wide, but in that case, I think it's probably going to be better to be three wide anyway. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, I'm so we, willing to bet it's just going to be playing three wide. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> I However, think that's a pretty safe bet. Though, so, I, I won't yeah. <laughs> I won't bet against you. Yeah. But, like, consider that, right? Like, the current rules, and, and that fits the current rules, right? But consider the guidelines saying that they're going to be more about killing models as opposed to breaking with combat resolution, right? Yeah. So I'm like, oh, all right. Now, how are you going to mix the two? That's where I'm just like, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Because narrow frontage is going to get you more ranks, period. That's automatic combat resolution. But if... Yeah, it's... uh... It, it's tricky, um, and I think there's it, been a lot of discussion on the forums about like the historical background of the lance formation, uh, like how it was used in in actual battle. Uh, and I think yeah. you can only get so far with like discussions like of, of that nature in a fantasy game. Um, yeah, I you know, and obviously I don't know how well you know me, but I get pretty obsessed with like accuracy and stuff, right? So I did some, I did a ton of research into that, and I'm like. Yeah, I think I think I read read a bit a bit about that um, on the on the. You think you linked something on the forum, um, or maybe someone did at least. So I, I've read up a little bit on the on the the transformation background as well. Yeah. And the, and the way I understand it from a historical perspective is that it's mostly as a a, a mobility reason. Right. Because oh. if you have a, a a wide front edge of knights and and you want to turn then. Every night has to yeah. turn at the same time, and yeah, it, it's it's tricky. But if you have a lance formation with like the, the actual lance formation, which is one guy in the front and two guy behind him, and moving right, back. and we're never gonna get that. That's insane. Uh, and the yeah. and the three wide unit is a close enough approximation of that, I think. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. So yeah, you're right. And the other stuff doesn't even apply to the game, so it's yeah. It has to be like raw formation, so but. yeah. Uh, and I think if they if they go looking at the at, at the like um, historical background of that last formation, I think one change that he could make to it, um, I think this has been spoiled for the Vermin Swarm actually, in that 
they are allowing um, units to wheel over other units. So if you wheel your unit and your backside goes over an another unit, that's fine, as long as you end in a legal position. And that could yeah. be a huge change for the land formation. Because yeah. they are right. so immobile now if you pack them tightly. Yeah. So, so if they could like swoosh, swoosh out their back back end over across other units, then they get a lot more mobile. And I mean, mobility is what they were yeah. aimed for. So that's a great point. I didn't I didn't think about that at all. That yeah. that, that could be a di direction they go. I think. Yeah. Shoot. Yeah, that's a good point. That would be cool. That would be pretty yeah. cool. Um, I think one. I think. I don't know if this is common, but I know for a while people kind of misplayed the movement rules with lance formation, where you can't, you know, your model can't end farther than where it started. Yeah. So if you're in a big lance, you do a 90 degree wheel and that's about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you're, that's illegal, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And there's a, yeah. Cause I saw that tactic brought up and I'm like, uh, you can't actually do that, dude. <laughs> so, you know? Yeah. But, that's one thing. I don't know, man. There's yeah. There's that, that's like, like a weird crux in the rules, and I don't. I'm not yeah. sure what, if they're gonna like handle it. It's it, it's put in in the rules to stop like conga lining and stuff like that. And yeah, it, the the equipping lance is like collateral damage. <laughs> but I mean, right. <laughs> that's not I'm, I'm great. I'm not a fan of it anymore, but it's you know a lot of people love it. So it's like you, you're gonna have to tread lightly on that one, you know. Yeah, that's that's a tough one to tackle. Yeah, yeah, I think the, the transformation it it is really an iconic part of the army. So I I don't think they're gonna do too much about it. Um, but it's yeah, it, it, well, it's yeah, it's it's a defining part of the army. So it's gonna be interesting to see what they come up with. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, well, that's good luck, man. <laughs> yeah, th that was my reaction when I saw saw that they them announcing the, the the team. Like, good luck. <laughs> this is gonna be yeah. a, a, a difficult ride. Um, yeah. All right. Um, I don't think I have that much more to bring up. Uh, one thing that I did think a little bit about was the background, and I, I'm not sure if this has been decided yet, but um, I wonder a bit. Who's gonna be the narrator in the in the in the storytelling of the background? Like the the uh, yeah. Infernal Dwarf book had uh, an um, an Empire of Stormstar lady and the um, uh, ambassador from uh, uh, Tsuanda. and I wonder if it's gonna be a Destrian that's gonna explore that the Equitain. That would be cool. I think that would I be. Could... Yeah, that would be cool because they're not right there. They haven't had it much of the Destra yet, so that that's a a way to explore that part of the world a little bit in the same the same time. Um, yeah, and it's a very close na neighbor, and uh, probably like a lot of culture exchange and stuff like that. So that would be sweet, actually. It could be Volskaya though, a Volskaya yeah. guy. Yeah, because they are actually allies. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, and so that could be interesting. Although they already have uh, the Warrior book has an, a Volskaya narrator said. I think oh, you want to oh, yeah. vary it. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. So it could yeah. be a so son style as well. Yeah. Um, I now that you but since you mentioned Destrian, um, I think that's more likely. That makes more. sense. Yeah, I think that would be neat. Yeah. So we'll see, man. All right. Uh, we've been chatting on for a good while now. <laughs> Do you want to wrap this up? Yeah. Um. Yeah. I don't really know what else to add. Um. I'm very excited to see how this book turns out. You know, that's. Um, I hope other people are too, man. I hope it draws in more people. Yeah. You know, uh, you you actually you, you asked me what armies I play, uh, and yeah. I, I do have a very small Equitain force painted. Uh, it, it's really old. So I I hate that painting, <laughs> um, but it's it's one of the armies that I'm curious about starting. Um, yeah. A new, uh, but it's. Oh, that's Okay, sorry. That's what I was going to ask you, but you, you basically just answered it. Um, I was going to ask you what would make you want to start a KOE army, and and what sort of change. I kind of I, I, this, uh, I I like the I like the current book. I like the army. Um, yeah. I, 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 the only reason I haven't started it yet is because I have other armies that I wanted to start more, 
and mm-hmm. it's uh, it's going to be an army that takes a lot of effort to paint. So it's probably after I finish my empire, uh, who yeah. is my is my current like all in with the best of my ability project. Uh, and mm-hmm. when when that's finished, maybe I could. I don't know. And well, and I say finished, I'm, I don't think I'm ever gonna finish Empire. I like, love them too much. But when I have a, like a, yeah. a fairly big, oh, I, I, I don't nice. think I've ever fielded a fully fully finished Equitane army because I'm constantly like changing units out or models. <laughs> or, yeah, so I, yeah. I don't. Yeah, it's I a cool that, army. Yeah. All right. Um, should we check up on the painting? How have you been getting along? <laughs> Not the most progress, to be honest. But let me see. Sure, some more green on the uh, on the legs, I think. Right? Yeah, I, I kind of the sash is green. I didn't want to change that. I didn't actually get much done, to be honest. I did a lot of shooting. It's kind of hard to tell. Let me see. If... Well, no, I don't really know what I'm doing here. <laughs> yeah, no, it lo- looks nice. Um, if you if you send me some photos, I can put those, uh, those up on the, at the end of the show um, to get a better look. But it, it looks neat. The pants came out cool. You just can't really tell the yeah. three different colors. Nice. All right, <laughs> but it I really do that much, I suppose. How about yours? How's your demon looking? Yeah, it's it's been good. Uh, I actually finished up pretty much the this guy. Um, so we oh, have nice. some some pink. Um, flames going on and a, a few demon dots and stuff like that. So it, it's been fun to paint. I um, I want to um, dude, you have no idea how much I'm waiting for your uh, your book to become official and all that stuff. <laughs> I love the idea of warbands in particular because um, every model is an individual like hero basically, you know. Yeah. So more yeah. detail, better, you know. I think it's cool and it's it's more. It's easier to finish because there's less model. So yeah, it's it's. Uh, I am really enjoying painting up like specific warbands for this. Uh, right. So that's good. Yeah, right on, man. So uh, congrats on that. That's, that's <laughs> about way overdue, man. I, yeah, yeah, I yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's getting there. It's getting there. Hopefully yeah. pretty soon. All, All right. right. Um, so. As always, I remind the audience again, uh, please share your progress as well. Um, and uh, I think that's it. So yeah. uh, thank you so much for coming on. It's been great having you. I think it's been a great yeah. discussion. Honor, man. <laughs> this was a fun, so I appreciate you reaching out. And, and, yeah. yeah. Uh, and thank you to all, all of you who's been watching. And um, see you on the next one. Cheers. Yeah.